Hello there, and today we'll be looking at a class of computers that was around before I was born, the 286. I have actually have a couple of 286 machines, and today we're going to talk about the first one I acquired, which is this big, heavy, compact SLT 286. This is technically a laptop, and by technically I mean it is a laptop, it's just a very heavy one. I don't know what, I feel how heavy this is, probably at least like 5 or 10 pounds, but it does have a handle on it. I don't see any modern laptop handles on them, we should bring that back. Um, this thing I acquired from someone on Craigslist for around $30, I think. Pretty sure it is older than me. I think this came out in like 1988, which I was born in 1988, but I was born in November 1988. I think this is from October. 1988. I forget exactly when this is from. This is a 286 laptop with, I think, a 12 megahertz CPU and just the 640k base RAM in it. You can upgrade the RAM in these, but it's nothing that you can just get. It uses proprietary RAM, which I've never been able to find anywhere. I think on eBay, if you look, you might be able to find some of these machines with the RAM in it, but it's way too expensive for me to want to go get the RAM or a whole other machine, just upgrade the RAM in this, so I guess we have 640k of RAM and uh, 12 MHz 286. So let's um, take a look at this thing. So here's the laptop. The thing actually has a lot of cool features which I want to see come back in like modern laptops. First I mentioned it has a handle like I think some like tough books have handles, but I think all laptops should have a handle. It makes it much easier to carry. Um, let's see, around the back, we have a little cover here. Underneath it, we have a collection of ports. We have a PS2 port with a picture of a keyboard on it. I don't know if you can plug a PS2 mouse into this, but probably only a PS2 keyboard. This is for an external floppy or tape drive. I think this may be like a SCSI connector, not entirely sure. Here is a serial port. It seems to be missing one of the pins, so I don't know if that will affect performance. I think I can still plug a mouse into it and it'll still work. Here's a parallel port. Here is a VGA port. And interesting about this VGA port is it seems to be missing a pin there. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but the VGA port has one pin missing, and then you can see the serial port has a pin missing as well, but the VGA port has a pin missing, and so a normal VP VGA cable won't fit in there. So what I had to do was, I found this gender changer, which has female on one side and male on the other, so it's not actually a gender changer, because if I plug this into a female port, it's still female, but what it does let me do is, I can take a pair of pliers and pull out one of the pins on the male side here so that way it fits in to the port then we have a VGA we can connect a normal cable to I've never tested this VGA port I don't know if, I, I don't know if it works I don't know if there's anything I need to do to make it work but you can find out oh and the last thing is for a dock which I don't have and are expensive to find um, just like the RAM for this thing which is also expensive to find so this thing can be upgraded to 12 megabytes of RAM, but like I said, they're proprietary RAM modules. Um, so the dock actually is pretty cool. The dock actually has one, possibly two, but I know at least one um, ISA slot in it. So you can actually connect full desktop ISA cards to this laptop. Um, one of the things this laptop doesn't have is sound. But then again, most laptops around then didn't. So with the dock, I guess you can connect a, an ISA sound card. Or when you can get one of the modern um, sound cards that connect to the parallel port. So to open it, there's a clip here. Push back. And then on the other side, there's a clip. But this one gets kind of stuck. And for some reason, the side of the case is a little broken here. But that is actually helpful because then I can actually push open a little clip that holds it together and open up the laptop. So when I get it open, I'm going to show you another feature that I wish more modern laptops had. So when we open this up, the keyboard can stay here and use it like this, or 
it comes off with its own little feet so you can set up the keyboard wherever you want and set it up and use it away from the machine. It's kind of a silly little thing, but it's, I don't know, I think, more, I think more machines need to do that. The keyboard is plugged in over here, and you know, the keyboard cable is getting a bit frayed, but this machine does work, the keyboard does work. The connector here, you actually can pull this out, so you can take apart this machine, which I haven't yet, and uh, I've looked online, and taking this machine apart is a bit of an adventure. But I'm going to have to, and I'll explain why I'm going to have to in a little bit. So right here is the battery, which I'm guessing is long flat. It is a NICAD. I wonder if I could rebuild it, like open it up, throw in some new NICAD cells, but I'm not going to worry about it. The previous owner had put some tape over it. I didn't put that there. The previous owner did, so that means this battery is luckily not making contact. So it's not doing anything. The machine does work, I just need to connect to the big power brick here. Um, the power brick is, the end of it is a little falling apart. And you can see that. This is, I didn't do this either, I got it this way. Interestingly, it says DuPont on this connector. Um, the camera will focus on it. I don't know if it will. But it says DuPont on that connector. I found that kind of interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the power connector to the side here. Plug it into the wall. There's a little light on the power supply here. I see two lights on this. I don't know what this one is for. I imagine this one might turn on when the battery is charging. But since the battery isn't actually connected, so this isn't going to do anything. So let's go ahead and power this on. There is a switch on the side. It is fairly satisfying to click. Hopefully you can see the screen on the camera. Later on I can try to see if I can get a capture from the VGA port. But for now, uh, I don't know. Well, you can see that. It says 640 KB OK on the screen. And it's going through its boot up process. I wonder if that's any better. I have situated the camera, pointed right at the screen, so hopefully you can see it better. And this is one of the things that happens when it boots up. If you, as you can see in the screen, it says system options not set, run setup. So that means the CMOS battery inside has died, and as you can imagine, on this machine, just like other 286s, it has the dreaded Dallas clock chip in it. So it's got the RTC with the built-in battery to control that, which is also the CMOS battery. And on this machine, those chips are not socketed. So we need to open this machine up, desolder that chip, and solder in a new one, or open this machine up, take, t uh, take out the chip, and do the mod to put a battery onto it. Um, I don't really want to do any of those things, but I have to in order to get this machine working. I also need to open the machine up so I can in A, install a 287 that I have, and B, check what type the hard drive is, because without the CMOS battery working, every time I unplug the power, this machine just loses all of its settings and won't boot from the hard drive. Luckily it does boot from the floppy drive, and I, luckily I do have the setup disk, so I'm going to put that in the floppy drive and boot from the diagnostic disk. Yep, time and date aren't set, because the CMOS battery is dead. And hopefully you can hear it booting off of the floppy disk. Loading program, please wait. So this screen is a black and white screen. Supposedly the VG port in the back can output color, but I've never tried that, so I guess we'll find out later on if it can do that or not. So here's the setup utility. Um, on, these, on this machine, this is basically the BIOS setup program. There's no BIOS or any, there's no BIOS setup program, anything built in. 
So you want to change any settings, like the hard drive, floppy drive, any of that, you have to do it from this disk. I have not. I'm not going to worry about setting the date and time, because this can never set itself as soon as I unplug it anyway. Ooh, a modem. And here we go. So we can see we have a Compaq SLT 286. No 287, I will eventually install that. We have a 1.44 megabyte floppy disk, which works. Um, it says the fixed disk, the hard drive, is Type 22. I'm not sure if that's right or not. I don't actually know what the hard drive inside of here is, because I need to open it up and find out what it is. There is no... Huh, it says second disk controller. I wonder if that is the port on the back for an external floppy or tape drive. Yep, there we go. We have the 640 base RAM and the extended mem memory or expanded memory. I think the compact expanded memory is the proprietary RAM and I don't know if the extended memory is. I don't know if that's something I could add as well or if that's just something the board doesn't have and can't add on to. The memory, yeah, there we go. Memory boards, module A, B, and C are the ones that you can get and install, which I don't have. Compact video graphics controller, and nothing else terribly interesting in in here. So I'm going to save this and see if it can boot up the hard drive. I don't know if the hard drive type selected is correct or not, but let's just see what happens. Taking the floppy disk out and just letting it boot up without the floppy disk. And we should hopefully in a second see something happen. I think there should be a copy of DOS on this hard drive, assuming I could get it to identify it. So we're still waiting for it to boot. And oh, disk zero error. Yep options not set. Weird. So I don't know if the settings didn't save because they should save the thing that is plugged in and we didn't get this disk zero error before so I guess that means the typeset is not correct. So I don't know what else I can do now except maybe go through all the types and try to pick one out at random but I don't want to do that. I do eventually need to open this but Looking online, there's a lot to do, there's a lot to open this. It's not the easiest, so maybe one day I'll open it and I'll show you guys. But for right now, this is basically all I can make it do is yell at me. Well, I guess I can boot from DOS, so let's try that. I'm going to boot in a normal DOS boot disk and also see if I can get it to output over the VGA so I can get a direct capture instead of just pointing the camera at the screen. Laptop connected to my VGA capture card. I've never tried this before. I don't know if I have to do anything to get the VGA output to work or if it just works, so I guess we're gonna find out. Oh! Something's happening. Nah, it doesn't look like the capture card likes this. I wonder. I don't know if this is outputting in like normal VGA, if this is like CGA or EGA or maybe it's outputting in some resolution or frequency that the capture card doesn't like. I'm not really sure what's going on. Because I don't know if you can see the screen, but the laptop is definitely booted up. It's giving me the system option not set error again. So this time I put in a DOS boot disk instead of the diagnostic disk just to see it boot into an actual OS which unfortunately we're not getting on the capture card here. That's unfortunate. I wonder if I need some sort of like adapter or something in order to change the signal this is outputting into a signal that the capture card can understand. So since unfortunately the VGA capture didn't work properly on this, I have to just go back to pointing the webcam at the screen. I apologize for that. but. Now I have a DOS boot disk here. This is PC DOS 
Yes, I know it's IBM PC DOS on a compact, but it's DOS. It doesn't really matter. I don't know if I can boot DOS 6.22 on this or something. I guess I could. It just doesn't have much RAM or very fast CPU, but it'd probably work. Speaking of probably work, I'm going to load something that I know will work on this machine. I'm going to load up a copy of my favorite modern DOS game that will work on a 286 laptop. Which is... Planet X3 by the 8-Bit Guy. I've never seen it in black and white before, so I wonder what it's going to look like on this screen. Let's see if I can adjust the screen a bit for the, the camera here. Um, probably just making it worse, so I guess I'm just going to hit enter and see what happens. The game should detect the screen type, CGA, VGA, whatever, automatically. And... I may eventually get an OPL2 LPT for this machine, so we can actually play this with proper sound, but I guess we're just going to use the PC speaker. And see, let's see what happens. Ooh. You know, that doesn't actually look that bad on a black and white screen. The PC speaker sure works, and the game should be playable, even though this is only a 12 megahertz system. Let's see how it runs. Oh yeah, there we go, totally playable on the screen. As you saw in DOS, the screen has a bit of like ghosting, and I think even this game you can sort of see the ghosting effect on it, but the game looks fine, and I don't really see any problems with playing it. I think this game would be perfect for this laptop. And I guess that's all I can really show you about this machine for right now. I'm a little wonder, wondering why the VGA output didn't work, but I guess I can try to fix that or see how, how to research that. If I need to get some sort of adapter or maybe I can't just use the adapter there. I've used that adapter on another 286 machine, which I'll show in a different video, and it works. So I know just taking a VGA plug like that and pulling out one of the pins does work, but maybe there's something special I need to do to enable it or it's at the wrong resolution or it's got something to do with the CMOS settings not being saved. I don't know. Eventually I will have to open this machine and take out the clock chip and put in a new one, which is going to be a bit of a chore, but when I do that, I will make a video of it and it'll be great because I'll actually have this laptop being actually usable because right now I can only boot off of a floppy disk. So it has a hard drive, it just can't see it because I don't know what setting it is and if the settings don't save properly, then it doesn't really matter what setting it is, because it still won't be able to read it properly or anything, but I guess for now, I'm just going to cut this video off here and say, see ya. Well, uh, that's weird.